In this video, you'll learn how to use solutions of copper 2 ion to demonstrate various principles of chemical equilibrium. To set up the experiments, we'll first dissolve some anhydrous copper 2 chloride in water. We'll also put some copper 2 chloride in acetone. Notice the striking difference in color in the two solutions. It is hoped that by the end of this video, you'll be able to describe why these two solutions have different colors. Let's begin our experiments with some of the copper 2 chloride dissolved in acetone. Notice that the copper 2 chloride in this case has a dirty yellow-green color. Now to this flask on the right, we're going to add a whole lot of salt. This will substantially increase the chloride concentration in the flask. Notice the shift to an orange color. This color change can be explained by noting that in the presence of very high concentrations of chloride ion, the yellow-green dichlorocopper species reacts to form a yellow trichlorocopper species. Further, the yellow trichloro species reacts with chloride ion to form an orange tetrachlorocopper 2 ion. Both these equilibria are driven to the right by the increased chloride ion concentration from the addition of salt. Now let's see what happens if we take some of the solution containing the orange tetrachlorocopper solution and add some water to it. Well, there's a shift to yellow. Now it looks kind of yellow-green. It looks sort of green now. Hey, it looked like it disappeared. But you know, if I look really closely, I see a faint, uh, yeah, blue color. The addition of water to an acetone-based solution of the tetrachlorocopper species induced a color change from orange to yellow. This color change makes sense if we consider the chemical equation above. Note that in this equation, a shift of equilibrium from right to left is expected upon addition of water. Also notice that such a shift involves the formation of the yellow-colored trichlorocopper compound, consistent with our observations. Further addition of water induced a color change from yellow to green-yellow. This color change involves the equilibrium between trichloro and dichlorocopper complexes, as seen in the equation above. Again, water shifts the equilibrium from right to left inducing the color change observed. The shift from yellow-green to green involves a shift in equilibrium between the yellow-green dichloro and green monochloro copper compounds. And finally, when enough water is added, the copper-2 ion becomes fully hydrated copper-2, which is known to be a faint blue color. Once again, water shifts the equilibrium in the reverse direction from right to left. Now we're ready to explore the color difference observed when anhydrous copper 2 chloride is dissolved in water and acetone. The compound appears blue in water, but yellow-green in acetone. Because the compound contains two chloride ions for every copper 2 ions, it makes sense that the dichlorocopper species, which is yellow-green in color, should form. This is certainly what's seen in acetone. However, in the presence of copious amounts of water, which is certainly the case when the compound is dissolved in water, the various equilibria shift to the left. This favors the formation of the fully hydrated copper 2 ion, which is blue in color. Therefore, we see a blue color when the compound is dissolved in water.